we've been given these two integrals, and you can see in the way that I've written them, they are intended to be related. And hopefully this is potentially ringing some bells from what we had to look at on Tuesday's lessons. If you have your notes still there and you like flick back, you're like, huh, this is different, but reminds me of uh, what we did then, and hopefully I can point out why. Let's, uh, before we get into that, have a look at question one, which Angad has helpfully provided us working for right here. Uh, you can see he's chosen his u, his dv, is the way he set it out. So he's going from, use this color, from his u to his du here, and his dv on dx to his v here. Are you happy with his choice of u and dv? Looks pretty good to me as well. You know, when you think about the dv here, we, we pulled out this trick of saying when something doesn't look like a product, we can still express it as a product by considering one as part of the product. So things look good, you get this, Hunky dory, right? I should point out, I mean, this is not too bad, but every time I do integration by parts, every single time, the answer comes out and it's so like out of thin air, I cannot help but always just give it another, like differentiate to see if it comes back, right? I don't know if you've looked at some of the integrals that you end up with, you're like, okay, I guess, like I got it out of a fairly straightforward process, but who would have guessed at this, right? Like there is this, and you, you'll see by the way, if you try and differentiate it, um, you'll get all of the terms so nicely cancelling out. You're like, oh, oh yes, it does work, okay? What a relief. Are you happy with that? Yeah? Help me out as we have a go at two together. When you start to whirl through this question, what is your choice of u and dv? It should ring a whole lot of bells. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, u in your L x squared, mm -hmm. uh, v being one. I DV. DV. Yep. Like so. Okay. Um, you look at this and you say, I, again, I don't have any, like I could make them log x and log x, but then I'm going to have to integrate. Like if I choose this to be log x, I'm going to have to integrate that. And we, you know, if you think about detail, right, it's L's right at the bottom. So we're trying to avoid that as much as we can. So it seems weird that even though we're building off of this, we're going to pull the same trick, but it does work. Because what du do we get out of this? We get. L and yep, power comes out the front, power reduces by 1, and then you multiply by the inside derivative, yeah, which is 1 over x in this case. And then our v, just like we saw before, you get x. Right? Does this ring a bell? So then when we go ahead and write our integral, we're going to get uv, here we go, x log x squared minus, help me out, say it with me. Integral of two, two, log two log x because these x's will cancel. You okay with that? Two log x dx. Is that all right? Now what we've done, again, I'm trying to ring this bell from Tuesday, right? What we've done is we've gone from integration by parts and then created something which requires another application of integration by parts, which is why there's this hence here. Thankfully, we've already worked out what that particular integral is. We've just got minus two of them. Do you agree? Is that right? So therefore, what have I got over here? x log x all squared and then minus two lots of, and then I'm just going to put all of that in. Does that make sense? x log x, take away x, and then here comes my constant. Are you satisfied with that? Does that look okay? Now, what you've done here, right, hopefully you've started to realize, like, I mean, I could keep on climbing up this ladder forever if I wanted, right? I could do, I suppose, in theory, log x all cubed, because if you went and rehearsed this process, you would still choose dv to be 1, because you'll do anything you can to avoid a log appearing here. You'll put log x all cubed up the top, and if you did that, think about this with me, right? maybe you want to jot this part down. If we put in u equals log x all cubed, what will our du become? What are we going to get? 3, yep, 3 ln x all squared, there's the outside derivative, and then we divide by x. There's the times 1 over x, the inside derivative, right? Now, that's going to appear in our v du. The x's again will cancel, but then what you'll get in this next integral, the integral of v du, is like, oh, this looks familiar. It's this thing, right? Well, actually, it's minus 3 of them, but you get the idea, okay? So this whole idea here should hopefully ring bells from not just Tuesday's lesson of an integration by parts process that required another integration by parts, but I want you to think even further back. 
I want you to think back to proof. Proof, you might recall, had two components to it. There was the nature of proof, where we introduced all that weird contrapositive, by contradiction language, all that kind of thing. Does so anyone remember what the second part was? It, should, it was a continuation of something directly from extension one. It was further induction, right? We looked at induction in like harder versions of it. We looked at induction where you had something that kind of referred back to an earlier version of itself. I don't expect you to remember this phrase, but we called them first order recurrence formulas. Do you remember those? First order recurrence formulas? It's like, oh, something that returns back or refers back to itself. Now, these things here are kind of recurrence integrals, right? It's an integral that refers back to like an earlier version of itself. We call these, here comes the heading, recurrence relations. Though, you will see some texts or some websites have a slightly different name. But hopefully you'll see why it's called that. They will sometimes call these reduction formulas or formulae. Because the whole idea is this process of integration produces another integral, but it's like slightly lesser, right? Do you see that? If we went up to the next step and did log x all cubed, you'd create this one, which is slightly lesser. It's like a reduced version of that. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to try and generalize this process. I'd really rather not have to go like one, two, three, four, etc. if I possibly can. So now what I'd like you to do, you can even call this question three if you like. I want you to consider what if we had log x raised to some arbitrary power, n. What would happen out of this? Now before you go any further, <coughs> excuse me, let me introduce or extend some notation we've used before that will help us tackle this particular question, right? You see how we've got these uh, versions of the integral which are getting more and more complicated, right? We customarily call our integrals capital I. Right? It's like, call this thing capital I, that's what we did on Tuesday, so it could refer back to itself. But here we've got like increasingly complicated versions of capital I. So what we're going to do to make it easy for us to keep track of things is, if you call this thing here I1, like the first version of it, right? The next one is just, well, the next version, so I'm going to call it I2. You can imagine if I went up to this, what would we call this? I3, right? And so on and so on. So here, at say this line right here, right? We could say, oh look, I've gotten this part out, uv, and then what I've created is minus two lots of i2. Does that make sense? So what I can do is I can use this language. I would call this i, look at the power, n, n right? It's the nth one, okay? Um, you'll even see some textbooks call this rather than i for integral. They'll call it t, capital T, like just like a, term in an arithmetic or geometric progression, right? Because you're building on top of whatever came before. What are you going to get? Help me out here. Like we've done this twice, two and a half times. What is going to happen out of this? Can you, do you have enough to follow a pattern? Have a think. Look what happened the first time. Here. This is our first line, our uv minus v du. Here's what happened the second time. Here's our uv minus v du. Make a guess. Make some conjecture. What do you think the UV is going to look like? Yeah, Tarun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I was thinking of the next one. Thank you, Tarun. Let's see if we can identify some sort of pattern between... I need this color, this will do. Here's the UV that we got the second time. Here's the UV that we got the first time. What do you see that's consistent? Well, the x is there because we keep on, we keep on consistently choosing uh, dv as 1, right? And so you get your v as x. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. What changes from i1 up to i2? Yeah, the log x term, right? This comes from u up here. So as you climb up, this time I've climbed up all the way up to the nth step of the ladder. So therefore, I'm going to get log x to the n. Is that OK? Now, this next bit, you have to think a little more carefully. Maybe have a think about this clue that I gave you up here. If we went up to the third step, right? Here we had how many lots of this? We had one of them. Here, I had two of them. How many am I going to have here? There's three. So if I went all the way to the nth one, how many am I likely to have? 
n of them, right? Because you're going to have u being equal to log x to the power of n. You differentiate and you get n log x to the, let's actually do this part, right? Minus integral of n outside of log x to the n minus 1, right? Here's the uh, n minus 1 here. It's 1 minus 1. It's 0. That's why there are no log x terms there. Here's the 1 log x term here. Um, I got 2 right there. There's the n minus 1. So here's an n minus 1 like so. Is that all right? Now you can see if I call this, this thing here, if I call this i n, then what is this? Yeah, that n is just a constant coefficient, right? There's no n in here. So I'll pop that n out the front. And then everything that's left is, oh, look, it's a log x to a different power. So that would be the previous term. You can see why these are called recurrence relations. It's exactly the same thing that those recursive formulas looked like back when we were doing induction. Make sense? Now, if I then, therefore, off of the basis of this, in fact, I'll even write that on the next line, i n equals Here's our x log x term minus, there we go. This is the definition of any kind of recursive formula. It refers back to an older version of itself. If I then ask you to go say and work out what's i5, right? You could just go ahead and put that in. You'd have to climb back down the ladder until some point where you knew what the integral was, right? Because if I put in i5 here, you would just get an i4 here. You're like, I don't know what i4 is. So then you'd have to work out what i4 is and so on. You get a string of terms, okay? But you could work this out nonetheless.